Um, I should have recorded all that anyway, because that was what I wanted to discuss with you. But, <laughs> well, thank you for the overview. Yeah, well, we might repeat a bit of that, but uh, hello, everybody. This is episode, what is it, episode seven now. I can't believe we're going this long, uh, of Building Site, which is a live streaming show where we code on site, uh, which is a web server built on the Crux database, which is a database by Temple Graph database from Juxt. I'm the CTO of Juxt, and uh, Werner um, is, is one of our principal engineers who's joined us very recently. Hi, hi, Werner. Hello, glad to be here. So we were we were just talking about what we were going to do today, um, which I, I guess it was really to review where we got up to. Werner joined Jocks this week and we were setting up his laptop, or more correctly, Werner was setting up his own laptop and we were having these high DPI issues. So I've been making a little plan or card to track these these things. Was there anything else that we needed to set up on your laptop? What else do you have to install? Did you install mm -hmm. everything yet? One thing that I tried to install was the Keybase um, GUI, which um, led me to another H high DPI issue. So, okay, we'll, we'll capture that. Uh, so, and I, I was explaining to Werner how this actually lives in the site database um, and what the structure looks like. And so, when we when we call this uh, URI, um, we in in the in this application, we call a, a kind of sibling URI which which gets the components. I'll show you this as we we reload the page, and uh, then I'm just going to increase the font, and then we reload this page and show you what's going on. Um, so. This uh, this is this card components API. We were talking about Open API just recently, uh, so just wanted to dissect what's going on here. We can see what it the request and the response. The response is this card, which is really a crux entity, which is really a map. If you know closure, it's very it's like a closure map, key value pairs. It's like a JSON object. And then it's this returns an array. It returns all of the children of this card and all of the grandchildren and great-grandchildren until it gets right to the bottom. And when it gets to the bottom, the leaves have content as well. They are, um, you know, for example, this text. Uh, it, it may have a, a reference. Um, we have a, a we have an example here. Um, Here is a example of a reference. We've got uh, an at mal in there. If we have a look at its component breakdown, and um, you can see right at the is at the bottom, um, it will be this para two object here it is, um, and now you can see if we break up the content. You can see that there's this URL here that ends in mal. So well, we don't know, we need to know a bit more information about this entity. So right at the bottom, it gives you this as well, brings this in as well. Now this whole response, it looks quite sophisticated, but it's done through no code. There's no code that does it. It's all done through a crux query, which we showed here. I think we've shown this before, but this is pretty cool. If you've never seen crux, this is a crux query embedded in an open API document. Ignore the fact that the open API document format is Eden because it gets converted to JSON straight away. It's just nicer in Emacs to edit in Eden because you don't have to worry about commas and stuff. But if we kind of break up this query, we are trying to find components. And when we find a component, we're going to pull everything out of it, which is what this pull syntax is. This is the EQL pull syntax. Uh, this is a feature in Crux as well. Uh, EQL is a query 
syntax for even that. Uh, so we first of all construct a root URI, which is a uh, it's a kind of derivation of the current URI. I don't particularly like this. Might change it. Don't really like monkeying around with URIs. Would much prefer that this is done in a different way, but that's not for today. But uh, we end up here with having got a root URI. So we that is the the root of our card, uh, and so the root is really the, the parent, the, the root ancestor uh, card. And then what we do is we say we're looking for components. Well, components are things that have IDs for anything really, any crux entity. But with this additional constraint, the constraint is that the, the component has to be a descendant of the root. Or to put that another way, the root has to be an ancestor of the component. Well, what does it mean to be an ancestor? Well, you could be the, the, the parent could have the child in its children. Uh, so we have, a, have some examples here that a this is a parent entity and it has some children. So if the child appears in the children, of a parent, then it's a child. Um, but it could also be recursive. So this is this second rule here is saying, or third rule here is saying, uh, well, if you're the uh, ancestor of a child's parent, that counts too. So that's the recursion. And then uh, finally, we're not just talking about children here because sometimes we see uh, little snippets where, uh, particularly that one, what was it called? This one here, para two. So we'll just, I really ought to. It's not very easy to cut and paste, but anyway. Uh, so this one has some structure. And we are coding, right now, we're coding in the database a paragraph, and we're breaking the paragraph into these segments. Because they could be, like this one is, that has some uh, italics. Um, but it can also embed links and references. And this is how we encode references inside the paragraphs to other things in Crux. And it also means that we can query for the backlinks. So if I happen to get mentioned, my name is mentioned in a paragraph, I can query for all the documentation that mentions me. So that's something you can do with a closed graph. It's pretty cool. You can you can query not just the you know the forward links. You can you can do queries on the back links, which is pretty cool. It's something that that uh, is used heavily in Rome and uh, Notion and products like that. So, um, but the whole thing is a mess, and it looks a mess. So we're going to have to clean up. Uh, so that's what I, I propose. We, um, so, 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 Werner, you've been doing some work with Reframe and Crux. What kind of things have you been building? As, as a, I, I, I understand this is just kind of some side projects and hobbies, but uh, what kind of things have you been cooking up? Well, I was trying to learn Reframe and um, Reframe specifically, and I thought, well, to not overcomplicate my setup, I thought I'll opt for a uh, serverless architecture. So I just started up a Fire, Firebase instance or a Firestore instance, and I then went out to look for um, existing uh, libraries or wrappers that exist that wrap some um, uh, the Firebase JavaScript um, SDK. Um, that didn't exist. I was tempted to write one myself, but luckily I found one um, from David Gold Goldfarb. He created a library called Reframe um, Firebase, and that was very easy to pull into my um, application. And basically, what Reframe Firebase does is it exposes um, all the REST calls to uh, Firestore as um, Reframe effects. Um, so literally in my code, when I fire a reframe event, um, 
I just make sure that the I implement a reframe effect to actually do the work of querying the Firestore database or putting some extra data um, into it. So it ended up being pretty easy to, to talk to the server side. It allowed me to focus on the logic in my little app with, to um, switch between screens and, and capture relevant information. So the, the uh, idea for the application that I wrote was just a way to uh, manage your buy to let property portfolio. If you have properties that you want to rent out, um, then you need a way to reconcile your monthly costs and rent coming in, etc. So it's a fairly simple CRUD based application that you capture a bit of information every month and that just gets sent up into Firestore using um, this reframe Firebase um, what, what, wrapper. Is, Firebase has got, is really a key value store in that you, you, know, you put things on keys, is that right? Or is there more to it? There's some query, there's some query, query language to it which lets you query collections but I've, I've not really had a lot of time with it. it what's the what's the API to Firebase like? It's it's um it's a document. It's a Firestore specifically um, because Firebase exposes two database the the two data, two database types of a real time database and a Firestore document database. So it's a document database. Um, you basically send it a JSON document and it will persist it. Um, as is, it's a all or nothing type thing. So every document replaces another. Um, but it also has a little query language that um, you just specify the path to the nested elements in your document, and it will query it on your behalf. Yeah. How exactly the the JavaScript is decay or the the server side uh, does that. I'm not sure, but how what it exposes to your to your front end is, is fairly simple. You just specify your path um, in a row as to where you want to get the information from, and and it'll fetch it for you. Right. Okay. Oh, that's cool. right. That's good. All right. Yeah. The, the, I'll show you how things get saved because this might reveal us some refactorings that we we should do. Um, when we when we can make a change here, let's say one, two, three. Uh, I'm not very original no changes. Uh, we want to see how that, that ends up going back down to the database. So I'll pick up this um, and I'll just show that this goes to. Uh, yeah, so this has changed to one, two, three. Now, how did that happen? We'll, we'll, we'll go through that and tell the story. And uh, and hopefully that will help. And so I understand how the code works. So this should all be fairly straightforward. We uh, we will first render the car here, line two nine four here. So you can see I've really been playing around. And the. Uh, yeah, this uh, when the card has a title, then the uh, we we put this heading element as this field. And so I'll have a look. So this is some um, reframe component. The uh, field is there. Um, yeah, it doesn't look particularly elegant to me. This one because. I mean, the whole code is a mess, but I'm just looking at this. This is the ID. You can see here the, the field, the ID of the card, I guess that is. Um, the, uh, the ID is then passed to that field. The data is resubscribed. I'm not sure why that, that sort of feels to me to be a waste, but maybe we could change Could it. maybe be done. Um, a little bit higher up in the yeah, good. Like chain. we just pass the data. I don't know whether it needs to subscribe to that data or whether it can, because it's here. It's just getting the the value of that 
data. Um, presumably, you know, it's you, you know, presumably you could just send the data directly to the field and then have to resubscribe. But anyway, we, we, we won't make any changes just yet until we understand what it does. There's a bit of... The subscribe will make it convenient for updating automatically if the reframe database gets updated, then right. the field will be updated. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then... Do we have a delete button here? The actual dispatcher delete attribute. And the attribute in in this case is this title. So, um, and the main thing is that, right, okay, so there is a, uh, a field React component. And this field React component, this is all a bit, well, it's pretty complex because it uses this slate editor. So, Slate Edit has a bunch of features. It's kind of like we've, um, uh, well, you, but uh, essentially there is a uh, on change, and when we change, oh yeah, we set a the value. This is a hook, I think, going on here. So set value, yeah, here. This is the the use state. Hooks. So we're kind of writing in raw JavaScript here, or what you know, interrupt. Um, and then this is a kind of attempt to debounce so that we can, uh, what, when the timeout runs out, we, every time we we uh, carry on typing, we clear the timeout and set it again. But when it expires, we call this save function. Uh, the save function has been passed into it. I mean, it's terribly kind of uh, fiddly, okay? but you have to understand. We we've been learning reagent and in JavaScript interrupt and and uh, reframe and slate all in one go. You know, and it's left a little bit of, of a mess. But anyway, this is the save function, and what this does is call a, a slate function called string that kind of brings all of the, the segments together. That's the thing that Slate allows you to you provide it a, a kind of model of, of lots of maps really. Um, and you know explain with you you know and, and render each of these segments individually. I mean I don't really understand how it works. But then finally you get this set set the attribute of this card this is the attribute name, and this is the value. This is the combined string, and that set attribute event is is here. We get the old card. We've got all the cards in this doc store. We've got a kind of crux ID to crux map kind of key value store in the app state, and then we get. Did it follow the same structure as the actual crux DB. No, well. It, it's just a key value store. It's just like a big map because yes. you know, we don't have any data script or data log engine here. I mean, unfortunately, it would be cool if we did. But, you know, it's just a. We, we we could bring in data script, but I think at some point we will bring Crocs into the browser. So um, <clears throat> that's an exciting prospect. Yeah, I think that we've been talking about it quite a lot uh, outside of the Crocs team, anyway, and. Uh, I know they've been busy having a Crux conference this week, talking about all kinds of internal stuff. But you know, one of the things that Crux does is have to it, it, all of the Crux nodes in a Crux cluster share a transaction log, and that transaction log is the kind of golden source of every change. And it would be nice to have a um, you know the problem of replicating state across the nodes is really the same problem we have here. We just like the browser to be part of that cluster and have a Crux transaction log and and uh, for that to on a as it needs to as the data log you run locally it would then bring in the documents that it would need because crux is going to kind of being re-architected re-architected towards that sort of bringing in 
bits of storage when they're needed. So there is a parallel here between the, the browser and the, the problem that we have and what a, a cro how Crux replicates anyway. Um, but I don't want to be too... It's interesting, you will you might get a, a win on both fronts, the structure of your client-side database as well as the synchronization up to the Crux server where I think um, data script, I think only gives you the client-side database that you can obviously structure the same way, but it doesn't yet solve the problem of actually synchronizing with a data log server. You have to do that yourself or put in an extra library like that sync or, or that kind of thing. So yeah, that's right. And then an interesting that, problem to solve. Yeah, you, you, that, that's, you're building crux again, aren't you, once you start putting a, a server-side layer onto data script. Um, so there, no, there's, there's definitely a lot of overlap with you know what data script does and what crux does. Um, but I feel if we were to race ahead and put data script in, we might be there might be a kind of impedance mismatch somewhere along the line. And you know, I'd like to have some time to to talk to the Crux team in more depth about subscriptions and and synchronizations and stuff. Um, but but anyway, to carry on the story, there is an FX here, and the FX is to dispatch an event called put entity new card. So we just put the card again in the database, and this is a, a happy side effect which is implemented uh, as put entities here. This must be familiar to you now but we, we have moved over to from uh, we used to do XHRIO and we fetch because we're using this a library that's new to me that called superstructure reframe fetch fx big shout out to whoever wrote that and um, Tim Green um, uh, one of our engineers in Jux uh, uh, recommended I use it and he's got a patch out to, to um, fix something he's found in anyway uh, so this is a JS fetch underneath that but it's a, a, this is a side effect uh, or a, an effect that then does this put with the URL is of course just the URL of the card that's the nice thing it's just a put to the same URL and with the body, pretty simple, right? Because you, the body is just what is the body? Ah, well, it's a stringified, like um, it's a stringified crux entity where we actually preserve the namespace in the yeah, we use namespaces quite heavily in crux, as you know, and we preserve them in JSON. Uh, why do we do that? because namespaces are really useful. It means you can merge maps together and you're free to do so in JSON. I mean, it's up to you where you want to make the properties. There's no, JSON doesn't dictate how you're meant to do namespaces. It just says you can do them. So we do them and we just uh, do them the same way as Clojure does them. And then we've got a couple of other things and then we get this mark saved succeeded. So as you see here, we um, whenever we make a change, like we update that title, we mark, we put the card back into the database, the new card, but we mark it as optimistic. What that means is that we, we add, add a little entry called optimistic, it's a flag, okay. and then what that does is it, it, it renders the box green. This is where we can see when something has been in the process of being saved. Fortunately, it's really, really quick. You, hardly, you, you sort of miss it. You, you know, I didn't even see it then, uh, but it just gets put into the database. And then, yeah, following the story of put entity, mark save succeeded, just goes and clears the optimistic flag in that, um, in that card. It's pretty simple stuff and you know, that's kind of what the web get and put is all about. You have a URL, you have some state, you put the state, you get the state. Uh, you sh shouldn't really be any more fancy than that. Unfortunately, site supports put and uh, does the necessary. Very interesting. Um, Malcolm, what is that um, HTTP? effect library that you mentioned yeah 
you gave the shout out for earlier? I guess. Yes. To reframe. Interesting. Um, I'm not familiar with that one. I'm familiar with the one called Reframe HTTP FX. Exactly. Yeah, that's what we were using last week. Okay. Um, and Do you encounter any issues with that specifically? Or? Yeah, we we did. Uh, we put it all in and thought it was all working and declared victory. And then the very next show, Jeremy and I, uh, we we noticed that our new card functionality had regressed because it was reporting a 201. Site will, site when you create stuff, will, if you post something to site or you put something that's new, it will return 201, uh, which means that not a 200. If you look at HTTP statuses, um, is the status of this thing for four, uh, two and one. Uh, this means so if we look at the RFC, um, well, that's not a very helpful. Uh, oh, yes, it is. Um, a 201 is what you return if something's been created, and if something's been updated, you should return. Uh, there we are, 201. You should return a 204 um, if you've got nothing in your body. If you put something, you know, you're. So th the nice thing about 201 and 204 is you can distinguish between a create and an update. So you can tell whether you've overridden something, stomped over something, or whether it's something that's been new, which might be useful feedback. Anyway, that's what Site does, and I don't think. You know, and, and that and for kind of other issues. And also because JS Fetch is considered to be the new kid on the block, it's the modern new JavaScript promises, you know, up to date thing, the way of doing it. And the and it's meant to obsolete XML HTTP request, which is, you know, that's what I, my understanding. I'm not an expert. It's a long answer. <laughs> but, it's experimental. We're playing around with it. If it doesn't work, we'll read that. But uh, I didn't know until last week that you weren't meant to do stuff in in reframe event handlers, the side effects and things. But clearly, you're, you're not. So. Oh yes, they. I think they call it the sixth domino of um, reframe flow, and the last one is effects. I think with it yeah. causes your side effects. It yeah, I mean, separates. I. I didn't want to get arrested by the reframe police and chuck him and being thrown <laughs> in reframe jail. So uh, I'm glad that we cleaned that bit of the code up. But anyway, that was that was it. So what have we been doing? Um, I am here now. Hello. Oh, hi. Hi, Jeremy. We were just uh, talking about, we haven't really done any coding. We were just kind of reviewing. reviewing. Um, Jeremy. But Jeremy, you now is a good time actually to show you what I've been working on today. So the ability to create a new card, um, and I felt that this is the structure of the card. It has a title and a, and a first paragraph. So this is uh, like let's say you you, know, you just had a uh, an interesting thought about CruxConf, uh, CruxConf idea, and let's say that the idea was to um, create a Clever new rules engine in Cruxide, right? And then something. And then uh, you write something for I, I have some thoughts today, you know, and then I'll just maybe you could say at today and it would just translate that to a date, you know, that sort of stuff. Okay. Um, and, I, and I got your, uh, well, I think I've broken your focus. Jeremy, yeah. but I got kind of most of the regressions fixed, so you can you can create new paragraphs. Uh, could because in the in the grand finished product, uh, the Werner, we are we just sort of take out take out some of this rubbish here and then um, use borders and what have you. It's going to look more like a a word processor, these things are going to be much smaller and it will feel like a, you're editing a, a document, but we kind of need to see what we're doing 
because we haven't yet reached the feature completeness of Microsoft Word, so we need to kind of have all this debug information to see what we're doing. And I, what, one of the things we do is we track the index of the sibling so that we can reorder and things like that. So that's how we do this. We, we delete. We have a magic backspace. backspace um, what would you call it? A kind of a, a backspace thing in our paragraph, which then calls this if the if the thing you're clicking backspace on is blank, if the text content is blank, uh, then it will dispatch um, a thing called unlink paragraph, and it will just remove paragraph. Although I'm not sure if it removes it actually, Jeremy. I think it just unlinks it, and so we just yeah. put lots of paragraphs in. Well, it's because the paragraph might be referred to from one. one oh, one that's paragraph. true. Yeah, yeah. So presumably we're going to do some sort of orphan hunt or something. We could do it in a transaction function, couldn't we? Do some sort of um, check to see if the, uh, you know, like a garbage collecting transaction function. Not today. And I mean, I, I don't really believe, in, believe that we need to worry about deleting things anyway. It's more just sort of, you know, I, I think unlinking is perfect. So sort of un unlinking something that was in the sort of visible history. Yeah, so right. It's visible history, but it's always there. I mean, unless you evict, it's... Yeah, right. Even if you remove, it's still there in the timeline. So you're not, you're not saving any garbage, are you? Mm. You're just marking it as, you know, yeah. However, I did think it would be quite nice now we've got a bit of craft. We've got this all kind of... We, uh, oh, the, the, you know, so the big news is that I can now, what have I done there? Yeah, I can now click on, um, oh, I think I can click on, you know, this problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, I think the big news here is that I can render recursively. So this article contains the section containing checklist item one. Do you remember this is one of our seeds? Um, uh, seeds. We have a, we actually have a thing called card and this had a type of article. So this is this recursive structure. So this is looking a bit lo more like a big document now. So that works and that didn't work before. Um, and I think you can go to these individual ones if I'm not wrong. Or, We'll just see if we can go to task 1B. Yeah, that actually is something that is independently renderable, which is nice. in progress as well. So now, w one thing that I was keen to build in, now we almost have a functioning system that one thing I would like to be able to do is be able to delete, to, to tidy up. Um, so to be able to delete whole cards or at least be able to delete paragraphs. We also have the problem is that I don't think we can actually delete the first paragraph. Not sure about that. Um, so let's try that one. Mm. Well, how about if you flag things as archived so that you know, accidentally delete everything or Whatever, you don't, don't display things that are archived in that view. Oh, okay, yeah. When you say archived, you mean we can just delete these things, can't we? We can delete the, just... I mean, you, you, what do you mean? You just go through the database and use RM? No, well, I mean, just, just send a, a retract, just to... Hmm. Yeah, yeah, you can do. Yeah. But it might not be a priority. The, the thing I was amusing about, Jeremy, and I guess this comes down to my, I, I'm trying to build a document editor and you're trying to build up a Kanban board and kind of, there's, <laughs> there's, a, there's no friction between those things, but just different emphasis. And so I feel we ought to go back and build the Kanban board, which I've just broken, because I don't think I've got anything in here. That. I saw the demo. Awesome. Yeah, well, you saw it. It's, it's, it's a good job we're streaming it. And so we know it happened. Um, 
so I'll just finish this uh, chat about this this concept of you're writing a blog this is you know something I've been talking about with people and I think everybody thinks it's a mad idea so I think it's worth doing is where you are con you structuring a document a legal document or blog article doesn't matter and you, you you say right this is a this is a paragraph at the moment and I'm going to promote this to be a section so this itself now becomes a card so that this is the content of uh, uh, the content of a card but it then becomes the title of the card and the content gets cleared out and then you can navigate to it and you can edit it and you can build it up so you are sort of doing it's a top-down way of coming up with the document which I thought was quite a and um, see how easy it would be, what it would feel like to do, be actually writing a blog article with images and code snippets and quotes. Um, maybe not today, but that was the idea. And I was thinking about a, 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 you know a button that you could click to say, yeah, this isn't this isn't meant to be a paragraph. I want to promote this to be a section. Hmm. Um, it doesn't seem like we're you know the URL wouldn't change, nothing would change. It wouldn't be a type, the type wouldn't change. It would just simply move the content. You would just set a title on this card and that would just magically become a thing. Yep, sounds good. In fact, we could do that manually, right? By, um, I don't know why this didn't let me. Uh, we could manually navigate to it. You don't need the IX. Thing, do you? No, yeah, I don't need that anymore. So manually, and then I can. Oh, I can't do it. it would, would if I could say set a, a title. If I had that set title button back, and um, on here, it's not showing it because it doesn't. If it's a leaf, hey, I'll bring that back just for fun, right? So. Okay, so that is now we can say add that you are now the introduction, and then I say here is the introduction. Oh no, the ah, but this now the return isn't working, Jeremy, because it doesn't have an index. Because it doesn't have a, yeah, it's not a set of children, but you know, that kind of thing. So if we go, went, went back to the blog article now, you would see that it's now got an introduction. Right. Um, so let's get the Kanban working and then we can. Um, so let's just talk about how the Kanban is meant to work. How is the, the rest of Crux Pump? Yeah, it was good. Just drew out a timeline for the next few months and we're going to do some fairly tactical stuff. Um, we don't want to spill the beans too much. But, um, don't spill the beans because we're streaming. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but yeah, no, we've, we've got got an aggressive timeline and team that's eager to uh, execute on it. Wow. Right. So, uh, Lou showed me this amazing trick where you can just, your subscriptions, you can just run them. <laughs> I never knew you could do that, like in the record. And so it's a great debugging tool. So what we're looking here is things that are, um, you know, we've got, so the Kanban is a subscription on all the cards. And it then does, okay, it map, it groups by status, but I guess none of these things have got statuses.
so I guess we could have a we could have subscription that found actions. That would be one way of doing it. We could do that, should we? I'm open to suggestions now. I'm not sure I follow what that suggestion was, sorry. Yeah. Well, we, at the moment, we, we sort of say that like cards are these hierarchical containers. Hmm. And we know that actions are leaves. There's leaves that we're saying that a uh, an action, let's find one, we've got one in our... Um, okay. Oh, so, so it's your contemplating whether the Kanban should automatically show all actions from across all cards. So start from the actions, then work your way up. I think so. Yeah, I think let's start with all the actions. So whether they're done or they're not done. See, there, there's, there's a not done. There's a to do and there's a done. So those should appear. But the reason they're not appearing is because they're not top level cards. They're, they're well, they're, they're not. Yeah. Um, Yeah, and this is a so I guess we could go through all of the cards that we have and look for I guess we, we're going to yeah in our doc store let's have a look at Cards is just getting all of the cards. Okay, I guess we could have one that says actions. So, are you imagining each action split out by itself, or would you want to group the actions on the Kanban into like? Well, I guess you wouldn't group. Uh, well, no, you, you could. Like, so you could have like. I mean, I guess it comes to this nested Kanban thing, but if a card has multiple actions. And then you have this nesting of cards. Mm. Um, how are you wanting to, to display that? Are you just going to pull out all the actions as leaves at the moment? I think so. Just like right. information. Multiple places, multiple yeah, places. I think. Yeah, this. And like, this. As, long as, you, as long as you have a link from that action to its parent card, you can see the context, I suppose. Yeah, well, we don't we don't have that at the moment. We don't have the yeah. ability to link. But that's a good point. But we could we could harvest that. Just having a look, and this is really our are all the cards that we have in the system and I wonder if we have are you wondering whether to add a new endpoint well no, no I'm, I'm just thinking well, what my thought so why are why are there no actions in here where are the actions uh, because the, the actions are the components of these cards. I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to remind myself, how do we get here? We we had this get cards, okay, so we get all of the cards. Um, and that is our... Uh, yeah, that's this rule here. This, this is pulling out anything that has children, right? In the database, um, now whether that is, but anyway, yeah. The, the thing is that our actions are the leaves, and the leaves don't have children, so this is why this is not. Um, we could have an actions uh, API. I think that would be one way of doing it. And we, we need to make a, an architectural decision, I guess, fairly soon. Which is, do we, are we just going to see how far we can take it, pulling down the entire data set?
Yeah. I suppose the Kanban is, we could treat our Kanban as just actions for now, but really, that would at least be some progress. I mean, just to get the, the Kanban board back up would be nice. So we could easily write a query that would return all of our actions. And potentially, uh, we could also return the parent of where the action came from, the parent card. That would kind of be useful. You could have two actions on a card, but you, yeah, you could. Mm. Let's just do that. Let's go and get all our actions. Rather than actions, I mean, could you just be returning paragraphs at this point or leaves? Or yeah, well, they are going to be just the leaves. I, I was presu I was um, proposing that we return anything that has a status. Now I know the arrow. You know, it's not necessarily actions that have statuses. More things that have statuses, but. Um, just to get us going. Yeah. And here we, we could almost, uh, so that would be everything about that action, but we could also pull out the parent. So we could say uh, action status um, and parent children. And then we'd pull out the parent as well. No, I can refer to from multiple parents, which I don't think is in your current model. I don't think you have any examples of that. But then they would appear as two different actions. So just be conscious of that. But I think it's fine for now. Yeah, you get you get. If you had a card with two actions, you'd get get it twice here. I know that. But I think you were saying that actions are leaves, and that everything else, uh, all the parent hierarchy is just an aggregation of the leaves. Um, so a card could be, have a status, but the card status would be a aggregation of its, all of its child actions. Yeah, I, I think the point I was making is subtly different. It's that if, if, if you have this sort of transclusion and you have um, an action that's being, that's a child of two different cards, um, oh yeah, that action would appear twice. Yeah, one with each parent. Yeah, I see. Yeah, right. It's not an issue for now. I mean, if we want to get something to show. And then we'd have to group by the action ID because it might be yeah. saying it could have multiple parents, and and I think that's cool too. Is there a way of grouping the parent? There's no way of grouping the parents here. You can sort of distinct parent. Yeah. You can. Uh, you can and that gives you the group. Well, we could always test it. But let's let's try that. So um, first of all, I have to. Token. I then deploy my card. And now we can test it. There we are. We've got some actions, and I even know how to do the JQ thing. To know how, how many actions there are. There is four actions. So that's cool. And we can find out also I think we can say that's alpha 
I'm just showing up here. Oh no. No. <laughs> Got caught out there, didn't I? No. Um, never mind. I thought I knew how to do that. I didn't. Oh, no. No. All right. And at least we've got the actions. I think distinct would work. Yeah. You think distinct? So we could try that. Uh, but we haven't got any test data, have we, with that? No, it's, yeah, maybe didn't make a note, but it's a problem to, to do or something. Yeah, let's leave that as a, let's capture that as a to do. And what if a, an action is contained by multiple parents and we should, we should run the sync. There is a find uh, aggregate for distinct. Yeah. There is, yeah, yeah. distinct, yeah. yeah. Wait until we've got the test data. Okay, so we could go back to the events. I think we, I think we do get cards. Oh, we get cards when we go to the when we click on the Kanban page, all right, let's have a look at our, our navigation. Okay, clicking on the Kanban page should do a dispatch and get all the actions. Now we have a get actions. And now we could have a look at, we could have a subscription called Actions. actions. And now we could have in our Can't believe how easy this is. Actions. So if we just click on actions, and worked first time. So four actions. So now we do have a. Are you still there, Werner? Werner, sorry. Yes, yes, yeah. I'm here. I just wondered, Following along. Yeah, I just wondered if you were uh, about to witness this. This may work where we just change this to actions up here. What's going to happen is that it's going to pick up, pick up, well, you know, that should be called actions. And the, the thing that we so, so just to let you know, I think, I don't know if you've covered this in Crux yourself, but you, you have this ability to return maps for, as a result set. So this will, this will bind the action key to the, the action content, so the, the parent, the parent ID. So we want to push out this thing called action. So that's what we'll map over. That's what we're doing here. So that, and then we're grouping by status now. I believe that all of these have statuses they do done so we should have uh, three to do's and one done and then they should appear on a Kanban board oh they do I mean it's ugly but um, nice. that's nice and they they kind of this is the idea you you turn it over and you can do it, done it. so if we were to go back to help Werner fix his uh, which was my first week of learner. If I was to say fix, click on that, and we go back to the Kanban, 
then we've got two in to do and two and done. So it sort of works. But it would be so much nicer if we had this ability to drag cards over. So, so what, what's going on? It, it, you can drag, but when you drop, nothing is happening. Well, yeah, there's, there's a, yeah, yeah. There's an event firing, but nothing attached to it. Yeah. There's an event that will fire, drag end. And it will tell you, there's quite a lot it will tell you in drag end. The, uh, so the, the object. Oh, the draggable ID, that's the thing that is being dragged. The destination is now done for that one. So if we take task 1B and we move it over to destination, done. Yeah, that's what we did. And then it will hit it right. So we need the destination droppable ID. Okay. So, I think, <laughs> um, we need it there and then we'll close the show. Um, so, where, let's have a look at this drag, um, Yeah, on drag end. Okay, here we are. So on the drag end, we need to raise an event, which will be set attribute, which we already have. Set attribute. So we do a reframe dispatch set attribute. And that's going to need the ID, which is Droppable ID from result. Draggable ID. It's this. Oh, draggable ID. Slash draggable ID. Like a JavaScript. The end result. It will need the attribute, which is just card alpha status. And it will need the, the new value, which will be the. Uh, the drop, the destination droppable ID. Destination drop ID, which I'm, I'm not certain. I'm really not certain that I've coded that. So I, I think I just print by these things. Do okay, another drag. Set attribute to to do. Cool. Okay, so let's take task A, 1A. Uh, so that's task 1A, and we'll make it done. And that's the task 1A done. All right. Okay, so if we dispatch that, then we're home and dry. Is that going to trigger the new get um, cards to then? I believe so. Oh, oh no, sorry. Does that do the put, does that do a put entity and do the, the mystic? Yeah, the set entity does the, the change on the card, and then okay, it does, you know, okay right, nice. So, okay. so I will refresh that the Kanban. Okay, and now we'll drag. Oh, we've done that. So we'll pretend that we're. We're going to buy 50 candles. We're going to drop it in here. And it didn't work. Oh, uh, it, oh it says no failure. Uh, because it's put in. <coughs> Why is it trying to put that into Kanban? Which is, of course, it's a not found. So there must be some. Which event handler is it complaining about at the bottom? The, yeah. Um, an object reference. Yeah, it thinks the ID, the draggable ID, 
Hmm. Let's let's print that one out again. What did you ask for, Werner? Uh, yeah, I just it seems like it doesn't reference the um, the event ID correctly. Uh, if you look at the yeah. file at the bottom. That's right. Uh, so the new card is the old card with this thing. So that's a you're you're right actually that the new card the one we do put entity it should take the ID of the of the new card, but it looks like it might have Yeah, it gets the ID. That's that's really unexpected. So let's just have a look and see what our actions look like. Because uh, it, let's just check that our actions look. Um, the IDs look okay. So that looks okay. That is an action. Um, yeah, these IDs all look fine. So. Let's do this uh, drag and drop again then. So moving this one over to here. I think the if you look at the last logging statement mm. frame no event handler registered for. I mean that is not a event handler ID. It is a JavaScript mm. object being printed there. So if, is it um, right that it hasn't been extended in the right way, or, or is it hitting the wrong, the wrong um, endpoint? Like it's trying to, it's trying to slash right. I mean, slash Kanban is wrong. It shouldn't be, shouldn't be picking to slash car. Yeah, I mean, that's right. There's a sort of underlying issue here. I think we, we haven't registered the event handler, so we're getting HTTP failure, which is, I, I think if we registered that event handler, uh, with um, something like you know, it's going to look like um, HTTP failure, and then we can that would just be an effect, it? and then we can just guess or like sure whether we get more information. Presumably we do. Um, let's try, try it. But now, you're, yeah, you're, you're right that we click on Kanban, we drag something over here, and it it is, um, the problem is it's trying to put to Kanban. But I expect we what we wanted is to put there. So if you look, follow the put entity, the put entity would depend on the root somewhere. Do you think so? So if we just follow it down from set up to do, we're dispatching a put entity of a new card, which we can print that new card post set. Actually, new card is because this shouldn't have the. I just wasn't. Um, we'll drag in something over here. New card is yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Mm. It doesn't actually have it hasn't, it hasn't located the entity because the entity is looking up from cards whereas this thing is stored in actions oh okay so that, actually our, our put entity right now is more like put card because it's requiring yeah the doc store. 
So maybe maybe we should put the actions into the doc store as well then. Yeah. When we get actions. Oh, you see, because it's not in the doc store, so it can't find it. Mm -hmm. And therefore, yeah. right, okay. Um, yeah, okay. Um, we should assert the old card there, otherwise, and otherwise it's pretty bad. Uh, and then, and here, otherwise we're we're in danger of just associating a kind of a new card on its own. Um, but what did you say? Yeah, when we. I, th I think when we get actions, we want to. Um, oh, receive when we've received actions, we want to. Oh wait. Uh, the dock store. How does how do cards get onto the dock store? Oh. Uh, uh, because they go through through sort of card components. That that. Right. This is something. Well, the, the cheapest thing is to to just do another search of the actions into the dock store over there. Yeah. Um, or you, you can chain them, but you can have one associated with multiple key values. But yeah. Yeah, and the key, the ID is going to be. Um, I think I'm. I, I prefer, almost. Hmm. If it's an action, I don't know. If we're safer rather than put all this logic in the same events. Just yeah. separate it all out in different. So instead of so we put these actions in here. Oh, does sweet. receive card components have to be to do with cards? Could it just be receive entities? Receive docs? Do they have to be with cards? I'm... Right now, well, you basically want to do the same as what's in received card components. You want to up update DB doc store. You want to do that whole merge thing, right? Yeah. Yeah, we, what we want to do... I'm... That's right. Uh, I'm cog. Yes. This is done on an in individual card, isn't it? Um, it's like we're. I, I, let's try and get it into the doc store so that the we have a. Or actions. I'm just aware. They are at this. They are in a. It's action like that. Action. That's that's actually the action. Right. Yeah. And then we've got this ID. This is what you're merging. That's the yeah. 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 Oh, you can. It just feels a bit contrived and dirty. Yeah. Worse. yeah. So there's the handbag. And then drag that over. No, a little. Assert. Oh, it's a failed old card, so the old card isn't in there. Oh, but when we. Yes, 
setting it. We're getting it from the dock store, aren't we? Mm. So, Okay, what should the don't leave? I guess your merge didn't work. Maybe the merge didn't work. It's the body, that's right. But yeah. Right, take, take the body. Uh, that's really, like, that's... Yeah. yeah. That's the response, in a way. And this is the, the body of the response. Yeah. And then... Keys. That is actually the action. And then we're, we're doing that. Yeah, that's nice. Um, and body action, this is body response. And then that's the same thing. Okay. And come on. Uh, Did we actually get any a network? Oh, we did. A, we did a put. Did we refresh the page? Maybe. Hmm. Maybe it worked. Yeah, maybe. It. Yeah. Okay. No, it, it sort of worked. But. Yes, because it's not updating the. It's not updating the actions. It's only updating the doc store, which is mm. indicates that I think we've got a bit of a messy database on the front side. We need to clear clean up that. Yeah. But. Uh, because we don't know now whether it's an app. I mean, we can go, this just feels, this just feels so dirty now. Uh, so we would be putting it in the dock store. I think we need to have a sketch out perhaps tomorrow, think about, yeah. trying to understand. I mean, this is, this is all pretty hard stuff to mull around, the structure of these things. But I think we've made mm. good decisions today. Uh, and I think we're making a decision that actions are leaves of things, you know, and we, they can be leaves of a list of actions, but they, you know, essentially we're saying that an action is a, just a leaf paragraph. Although I'm not very comfortable with that idea because it feels like that only gives you one paragraph to say what you want done. And Sometimes an action might be a whole, um, you might need a lot of explanation and some pictures and, you know, go to this. Well then, well then maybe you should be able to say, well, each of these Kanbans, you can have multiple Kanbans, mm. and you, you should be able to say, I only want to see actions where it is also the sort of, um, where it's also a top level, so there's only one parent, mm. it doesn't have one parent. That way you can see the sort of master actions. And if the status of action is inherited from its children, then... Um, oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's nothing to stop anything having an action. Uh, so a high-level thing can have an action. A uh, high-level card can have an action. I don't think we're really um, well, preventing I, I, really, I really like the idea of inheriting the actions. And as you said, sort of the progress should be inherited as well. So yeah. a card done sort of progress indicator but you could just calculate it on the fly with the, with the data log it's not yeah it's me have to worry about maintaining it. yeah exactly 
Well, I think that that wraps up the show. We know what to do tomorrow. We're going to have to think about this. Um, I look at the open API, uh, and I think, well, there's nothing here that says that the action can't be a card, or, you know, it's just anything that has status. And here, we've got the parent, which gives us the context. But um, Yeah, it's nice. It feels really orthogonal. Mm. Because that's what you want the Kanban to be, you know, to be able to organize and put in a Kanban the smallest possible things or just fairly large granular things. Or, you know, you might have a to-do list, like book a holiday, but that you can, you might, I'm just thinking a lot of this is about the evolution of your thought as a human and in your plans and you know, this is a current theme in in our building crux applications and being schemeless from the get-go is that we recognize and we observe that humans but well, we don't know everything when we start out in fact we know nothing when we start out so for example if i have a plan for the weekend i will say oh i've got to book a holiday Oh, and then I've got to organize a sort of anniversary present or something, right? And then you you then look at your book holiday and you think, well, actually, yeah, I've got to go to, well, I've got to maybe search online, maybe go to the travel agents, maybe I've got to, you know, do some research. You, you know, break it up and you might say, oh, I've got to book the flights, I've got to book the hotel, I've got to find somewhere, you know, to look after the cats or something. So that, that book holiday what's the word, you know, decomposes into a whole bunch of stuff. It doesn't decompose on day one, it decomposes when you, when you actually start the planning process. So capturing the ability to evolve that. It's very analogous to the, my how we've begun this episode, where we talked about taking the introduction, the, the paragraphs that says, I'm the introduction, and then you, you delve into that, you drill down, and then you start capturing more... Uh, it's a bit like a top-down process, and it's to embrace that. I believe. Very interesting. Well, it's we're in the middle of a design. You know what? What, <laughs> what makes sense? It's kind of uh, there's nothing like coding to force you to <laughs> make decisions about designs. And that. I'm going to dig out. I think we're at the point with the Kanban. I'm going to dig out my notes on Kanbanning because I, I clearly like having like an unsorted to-do column is mm. not that helpful, and, and we, we need to figure out the prioritization and the, the sort of fractal nature of this. Mm. So I'll, I'll see if I can dust this off tomorrow. And, uh, and it's, it's definitely, I, I, you know, I felt that there's status is a is anything with a status and. An action has two statuses, but there's lots of things that have more than two. And really, exactly like a, a true Kanban is more like a sort of infinite state machine. Mm. You know, everything's moving from these arbitrary states to arbitrary states, and we, we loosely categorize things, but every, everything is unique and mm. sort of in its own column in a way. Um, so trying to figure out what are the optimum horizontal columns. Yeah, and the, the, there's a, a Kanban is really just an approximation approximation of a workflow process and when I started my career we, I worked in a workflow group we used to construct these diagrams and every process would have a set of it, a series of activities and some of them they would be linear sometimes you would have these forks and joins and things uh, and you'd make these decisions and things and, and what it would do is constrain the state uh, state transition drive diagram was well, the, the edges, the transitions themselves, would constrain where you could go. The Kanban board, or the Trello Kanban board, is rather unconstrained, that anything can go from any column to any column, which is only a subclass of the kind of number of, you know, of the processes that you can build with a workflow tool. And mm. so as you evolve your understanding of the process, you start, you know, at some point you get to this kind of Kanban thing where you realize you need to divide things into different status categories uh, and then you need to add and then you realize oh actually people need to go from this column to this column but not to this column and um, it doesn't make sense to move them to that column you know so um, uh, 
you may decide to add in some extra constraints. I think that's what you do with GitHub issues, don't you? You create these workflows that say, oh yeah, if this is a successful merge, then automatically move this from here to here. Yeah, I mean, GitHub is very, very immature in that regard. Acura, of mm. course, has a very complex workflow capability. Uh, it, it, you just reminded me of something called IBM Blueworks, which I got excited about when I first joined all those years ago. And uh, that was like their sort of lightweight web-based um, business process modeling tool. Um, but yeah, this entire field is fascinating because, of course, and I, I've n I haven't made this connection until just now, but um, like the beauty and the constraints is that you can then delegate stuff and you can say, ah, for this role of person, they can make these sort of, you know, they can only change from these states to these states. They're not allowed to do anything else without escalation. And yeah. so from an organization perspective, this this design of the, the workflow of the Kanban, but constrained by role is actually mm. like paramount to sort of creating, uh, you know, repeatable processes and quality control and yeah. yeah that's quite right actually yeah that i mean in in our world um we wouldn't give our uh, you know we wouldn't, wouldn't give katie the authorization to make a hire or re reject decision on a candidate you know but we might like her to be able to move things from uh from hired to hired and uh, laptop ordered you know or go through the onboarding steps I mean, there are certain things that um, so there, are, there were certain points in the workflow processes I remember working on where you'd have a decision point where a manager, you know, if, if the purchase was more than $5,000, then the manager would have to approve and it would have to, it would automatically route such purchase orders to, you know, another bin or a work tray. That was the idea that it would end up, you know, you'd end up with a, a, a work tray of, of all the, you know, and those, those ideas go back a long time. And I think that the benefit of a Kanban board, Kanban is really about communication. It's about indicating across the factory floor some status. Um, hmm. You know, that quick, we need more French fries in file, you know. And uh, it's, it's signaling that we find Kanban's very useful because we can we, we like to be able to see, you know, the gloss over the status of the whole project. Certainly as like a user interface component toolkit, they, they seem very obvious. I'd love to know sort of what the earliest Kanbans were, like did they exist mm. in the personal computers of the 70s or 80s or whatever? Um, mm. What was their mainframe Kanban system? I'd love to I don't think there were. I don't remember anything of Collins. Do you, Werner? No. One of the column view of, you know, this is as if in this status and this is in this status. You know, things always had a status. There was always a column that said status, but grouping by status and seeing that in a kind of, yeah, in that, in that grouped column, column away. I don't know. But it's another view, it's another presentation of the same, you know, it's these cards that are just presented in this sort of linear or this kind of column of representation. Um, like I said, it's the communication tools more than anything are a way to rapidly yeah. communicate right, the status of the process. Yeah, I mean, you can, is it a pivot table? I mean, you can pivot on anything. You can say, oh, show me, show me all the managers in this column and all of the other people in this column, you know, and, and so because they want to see it at a glance, or so everybody working on this project in this column. I mean, we've been doing this from forever, you know, kids lining up in the playground, you know, everyone go over there if you're born in January. So groupings, it's just visual yeah. groupings. By yeah, I, I guess you can even imagine like in a really old office, just like big desks with like in trays and people must have got, come up, reinvented this pattern thousands of times yeah. across human history. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I think the workflow systems of old were pretty sophisticated in this respect, in, in like uh, uh, being able to bring to people's attention exactly what work they needed to do that day. You know, what, what are the things that, that and we do, we do completely ad hoc now, random Slack and email and, you know, but in 
and, and, and it's all at, it's all very ad hoc. But that that kind of what do I what decisions do I need to make at 9 a.m. You know, and and um, and those are all queued up, ready for me, and there's no other clutter in my inbox. And it's just the stuff I need to do prioritized. You know, and and, and I don't. I feel now we're constantly prioritizing manually our own work. You know, my my Gmail, for example, is is not prioritized at all. It's just a, a linear flow of, of you know, of jump. Happy to deal with, but it doesn't seem like we've moved on or we've progressed over the last 20, 30 years. The plan is to prioritize these columns individually as well on the Kanban board, up and down, like yeah. you drag them. That opens a whole bunch of worms because we didn't. Um, oh no, I've lost the done now. I don't know where the done is. Well, you have to manually, you have to go into one and then unassign. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I can't do that because I can't click on them yet. Well, no, you have to navigate to Werner, like the yeah. Werner uh, thing. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I, I think definitely you would have a up and down, but whether you would do it through that command view or, or whether you would sort of embed the ordering in a card. So you would say this card needs doing and the, this is the ordering of this card. So maybe you'd model your selected column because that's the only one that really needs ordering, the selected column. The select the card itself. And you say that this whole card needs doing. And... Well, what would? How would you store the relative vertical ordering? You know, because well, I... Vernon said this is this is priority, right? But we, this is a dynamic view, so there's not a collection here. I've been thinking, well, maybe it should be a collection, but then what would happen if you had? You, you know, some human has gone in and given a ad hoc ordering. Yeah. Should you not store that? You, you, you should, and I think that would be as a card, and then that card would take the place to those things that you've got it right. That would be a container, all right, yeah. and the column itself would be oh, that's very nice, all right. So the the column, the card contain could contain those things. And what happens if a new one would have arrived? You know, if a new card is created and click done, that would then quit. Would that would still then that card would virtually select that new action. Uh, but wouldn't have an ordering for it, and so we'd put it at the bottom, presumably. Yeah, I, I think you'd still have a column that says selected, and, and then it would automatically, I mean, most things make sense to work on a first in, first out system. So you want to s s sort by date added. Yeah, okay. So things should go to the bottom. Yeah, okay. So we could definitely, yeah, I was just wondering, yeah, there, there is definitely a date order here, potentially, or some ordering here, but when people use drag and drop to to change the order, the vertical order, we don't have to support this, by the way, but um, you um, you want to allow people to, in, in some contexts, it's nice for people to decide what the natural order should be. I, I, I think it's essential. I, th I think it's, it's very, very important to be able to do that, uh, but also to have, sort of combine it with like a Almost like rule combining algorithm, uh, right? Context, but like that that idea of um, saying, well, any to dos from this category of things are twice as important as all the to dos from this other category. But we also want to interleave them by, um, you know, how many days outstanding are they? So, so you, you want to have like a, an equation to govern, you know, the, the default ordering, and then you maybe want to overlay some some ah, this this actually does does have a higher priority. Yeah, but I mean, what if, what if yeah, but what in that algorithm? You need, how do you take into account a human's ad hoc decisions to order things? Yeah. Well, you, you can just add ma manual weightings and then okay. the algorithm would right. take that into account. But uh, I, I'm sort of stepping back, I, I almost see like the entire configuration of this Kanban. Like this Kanban we're looking at right now should be the configuration for it should be stored as a card. So, right. like this Kanban is a card. Yeah. Um, and so if, we, if we're going to go down the route of having, you know, like sorting of things by dates and things, you want to save that configuration. Right. Card. And so the, the column has to be a card and the uh, and the, the Kanban has to be a, a group, uh, a card itself and which has those columns, columns as children. Y yes, I think so. I, I came up with a, a data model, which I think would work for it, but uh, something along those lines, definitely. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. I mean, because it, it sure as hell doesn't belong in the code. Just, 
you know, the thing that we've been banging on for ages now, that, that this is form and therefore does not belong in the code. And that the, the reason why people make are writing so much code these days and having to release it every five minutes and keep on, you know, lots and lots of developers working on systems is because people are coding the wrong thing. They are, they, they, they're coding structure, they're coding types, they're coding form yeah. where it shouldn't be because those things need to be turned into declarative things that you can, that you can put in a database. You know, that's their home. It, they belong in their database. They don't belong in a Git repository. Um, but we, we need to keep on, you know, we need to practice what we preach here and, and figure out how to, yeah, make Kanbans just another type of data structure. Um, yeah, but, I mean, that, yeah. That, 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 as a path, I, I don't think it's wrong though that you've kind of got this global view, like you, you do need to bootstrap from somewhere. So yeah. having an org or a, like a oh, sure. yeah. central. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And the, the code is, is gnarly and we need to sort of just make sure that we we um, we inch along bit by bit because this is stuff that's quite quite hard. I find it's hard on front end. Uh, you know, yeah, it just like, it's just a very slow process because when something goes wrong, it takes a long time to debug. It's very kind of uh, brittle. But hey, you know, that is web development, right? <laughs> so when when, uh, when you stop recording, I have a. Uh, okay. Oh no! I stopped recording. I was going to stop streaming. Bye, everybody. Thank you very much for for. Uh,